Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. In this particular video, I'll be discussing the second in the series of uh, ZFC axioms or beliefs, and I'll be discussing belief two in this video. And I've treated this topic a lot in the past, but I'd like to treat these so-called axioms one at a time so that you can get a better understanding okay so let's begin now uh, if you remember uh, the first uh, so-called action was the action of extensionality which says that uh, if an object is equal to another object um, if two objects are equal to another object then they must be the same object right Okay, so in this second belief, it's not really an axiom, it's a belief, and it's garbage. It says that for any A and B, it doesn't even, states, doesn't even state what A and B are because there is no formal definition of set. It says there exists a set A and B that contains exactly A and B. And as you can see over here, this is the way it's written in first order logic, <clears throat> and it's read as for any a and for any b there is a c so that for all x if x is an element of c this is equivalent to saying that x is either equal to a or it's equal to b now if one were to allow oneself to imagine the set of real numbers there is no such set but let's just hypothetically assume that it exists and also that its power set exists then this belief certainly becomes quite interesting because how do you create a third set from the set of real numbers and its power set? And of course, that's where George Cantor, the father of all mathematical cranks, comes in with his different levels of infinity, etc. So um, you're always somehow able to create a third set. But this, this axiom is fundamentally false, uh, especially in terms of the fact that there is no such set as real numbers. And if there were, then there would be no third set with real numbers and its power set. Okay, so it's quite strange because there is no reason to believe that if any two sets are well-defined, there should not be a third set containing exactly the same, right? But the morons who designed set theory wanted a cover-your-arse belief so that they could produce more bullshit about sets whose elements or sets they may not be able to clarify or clearly identify all the elements. For example, the set of real numbers. Uh, you, can, you cannot identify all the elements of that fictitious set because you simply can't identify them, right? So they aren't distinct. There, there is no distinct uh, set of real numbers. So... They wanted to create bogus infinite sets by pairing. So they could start off with uh, an imaginary empty set, which they symbolize like that, and then use it as an element. Of course, only the gods know what such a set looks like, because to include it as, a, as an element, one requires the belief that it exists. That is, the empty set is equal to the set of all x, such that x is not equal to itself. Can you, can you think of any object which is not equal to itself? Preposterous. But in this case, the moron orangutans of set theory accept that such a set, as you see here, exists, okay? And it has to exist because everything else fails, even from the first uh, belief of extensionality, okay? So every idiotic set theorist and topologist has his own version of what these beliefs mean, and they come in all sorts of shapes and flavors. If you look at this particular video, uh, and I have uh, I have it over here, this this guy here who calls himself machine learning god, oh goodness, you know, that. by the way, there is no such thing as AI. Uh, advanced automation is what the idiot programmers call AI. It's not AI, and there won't be AI for the next, not even 10,000 years, if we're still around, by the way. So AI is a myth. Now, uh, and of course, you've heard of all the authors of deep learning and what have you. It's all a bunch of crap. The, there is no AI there. It's advanced automation. And there is a huge difference between that and AI. Okay, so artificial, artificial intelligence is just a, 
uh, catchphrase or a marketing phrase. Now, this guy here in his video on unordered pairs, uh, he talks a load of crap, but it's kind of funny why he says this set does not contain el any elements and it's called the empty set. Then according to the axiom of extension, which is supposedly the first axiom, there is only one such set. But if you'll notice, when he tries to uh, justify that, he goes to the axiom of specification, which is really this axiom here, the axiom of subsets. <laughs> and he has to do that uh, because he, 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 uses, he uses it as uh, support for this false belief too. And ironically, it comes after too. So you, 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 this is not only circular, but you have to, the ZFC axioms are not only circular, but you have to believe that uh, subsequent decrees exist so that you can justify the knowledge of, for example, previous decrees. So it goes to this decree here to show that, that the uh, unordered pairs is a subset, okay, to show that the, uh, the empty set is a subset of every set, I'm sorry. And of course, you can use unordered pairs to create all sets from the empty set. And you can't create other sets unless you've shown that the empty set exists. So this belief is something that you have to accept, okay, on faith, of course. All right. And now, by the way, there are millions of, oh, I just got a new subscriber, never mind. Okay, I'm just growing in subscribers. But you can look at these two uh, videos that I've created here. The one's called ZFC Actions or Beliefs, and the other one is a foundation of mathematics on not set theory or ZFC. And they both cover uh, a lot of details that I'm actually omitting from this video. But there's just simply too much crap for me to cover in one video. So I'm covering these beliefs separately. Now, while this... Uh, definition here is obvious nonsense. Some set theory diehards die will attempt to define the empty set as follows, like that, right? So what that says is the empty set is a set of all x such that if x is an element of the natural numbers, x is less than zero. And of course, <laughs> there's no natural number which is less than zero. So that set has to be empty. Now you may think, well, well what's wrong with that? It seems perfectly logical, right? Hmm, not actually so, because the immediate problem with this bullshit is that it assumes the set of natural numbers already exists, and that is false. There is no set of natural numbers, because there is no such uh, thing as an infinite set. There are many other syphilitic definitions. All of them are wrong, and this is why you're required to believe in this axiom. Now, every Tom, Dick, and Moron has his own ideas and it doesn't matter how many websites you visit how many uh, professors articles or lectures you read they're all non-standard in other words they do not have standard symbolism they do not have standard ideas they've just basically interpreted these nine beliefs as they please and what's wrong with that after all their beliefs right <laughs> that's really too funny so for example uh, that well-known crank, Mark Tukarol of Good Math, Bad Math, actually his blog is really Bad Math, Bad Math, but he thinks that the unordered pair exists so that one can have Cartesian ordered pairs. Mm, well, I hear Star Trek music playing when I read his blog. It's unbelievable crap. Now, it suffices to know that the second belief is simply a decree, just like the first, which cannot be true according to the non-existent definition of set. So if you recall an old video of mine, I showed you that there is no formal definition of set. And I've placed the links in here. You can hit the pause button and go to these links to watch my previous videos. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this second in the series of the nine beliefs. And it will start to get even more interesting as we hit the remaining seven beliefs. Uh, of course, there are nine because I include the so-called axiom of choice. It's actually the belief of choice. Uh, set theory is unbelievable rot. And it shouldn't be used for anything, not for machine learning, not for advanced automation. It should not be used anywhere. And if it is, you are guaranteed to find 
contradictions, paradoxes, and problems. So what is the real foundation of mathematics? It's actually Euclid's elements. And in his five common notions, Euclid uh, succinctly states what uh, the foundations of mathematics are. And that is really what we should be focusing on, not the bullshit of topology or set theory, okay? To which there is no end of bullshit. Now, um, I'll continue the series in Belief 3, which is the next video. Till next time, I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new Calculus channel. Goodbye.